Hey everyone, for this week's video we are diving into my first multiplayer guide for the DCS Mirage F1CE. This guide is really focused on what you need to know and what you need to consider when employing the Mirage F1 in an air-to-air -air multiplayer setting. This should apply to all servers, but it's really focused on our Cold War server. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. The Mirage F1 has been a welcomed addition to the Cold War scene in DCS. Since its introduction, the Cold War scene doesn't feel fundamentally different, except that it feels richer. So I think this is a testament of how naturally the Mirage F1 fits into the era. With every interesting capability this plane has, it has some quirks that you have to consider. It feels very Cold War, and understanding these things really leads to success with it. Please note that at the time of this recording, the module is less than a month old, so Argus is still building out the module. Some points in this video may not always apply to the future, and should that happen, I will note it in the comment below, and if the module ever changes fundamentally, I will make a new video which would appear in the top right at this time. So if you don't see any, anything in the corner, then that means this video is still valid. Let's hop into it. Regardless if you are a new Cold War player or a hardened veteran in the MiG-21 or the F5, then the first thing you should know about this plane is having to manage your speed. This isn't the most exciting topic, but it is an important one because if you don't get this, then knowing the other systems in and out is really useless. The Mirage F1 is fast, and this is one big advantage because in my experience with it so far, it retains energy very well. Now with that said, if you ever get slow in this plane, it can become quite squirrely. And on top of that, if you get slow, then it'll take a tremendous amount of time to get your speed back. This means that you are quite vulnerable. In this example, you will see me climbing up to intercept an F-86 at altitude. I have a lot of speed, but as I come out of this implement that I'm pulling way too hard, I lose a significant amount of speed, and then I become a snail for the rest of the fight. This leaves you defenseless and unable to react to anything should a third party enter the fight. Meanwhile, your opponent may be, be able to pick up speed faster than you, which puts you at a disadvantage. If you are building up speed, I strongly suggest you re retract your combat flaps, because if not, you will never be able to get uh, speed again in, in any meaningful time. Now to go to the extreme other side, this does not necessarily mean you want to stay as fast as possible and feel free to yank your stick. Just like the F5, it is possible to break your wings, which you will see here when I try to jerk for a snapshot. So you can't go too fast or too slow. This means you have to manage your speed, which is very similar to all the other cold war planes. I'm finding that having around 400 knots of airspeed and keeping your AOA meter in the yellow state seems to realize the best results for me. Now with that said, I have talked to some other players that I trust and they're preferring 400 to 450 knots and they usually hold their turns in the green to low yellow AOA state. Raid fighting in this thing requires patience and trust because it does take time to outrate your opponent. This isn't a MiG-21 where you can rely on your instantaneous turn radius or low speed handling to win out fights. And it's not an F5 where you have a ton of nose authority to scissor and change directions to win an angle advantage. The fights in the Mirage play out over time and you really have to trust that you're slowly grinding down your opponent. With that said, the longer the fights last, the more fuel you will burn. With nine internal fuel tanks, you will get lighter and gain more of an advantage. But with more time dedicated to the rate, you leave yourself very exposed in a live multiplayer setting, you are not doing a gentleman's duel. Anyone else can appear at any time, and you are exposed in this state. I have been finding that the most success with this plane is doing hit and run tactics and not committing super hard to fights. Lastly, the combat flaps and air brakes are interesting in this thing. You don't have the nose authority of the F5, but I have been finding success so far in trying to get overshoots. So while I don't recommend to get slow, sometimes you have to. And with this example, this F5 tried to nose over so hard to keep up with me that he ripped his own wings in the process. Now that we have the flight characteristics down, we can get into the systems. In general, I would recommend watching Red Kite's videos to get the full download on everything. What I would like to focus on are the things that are relevant to multiplayer and explain how to use them and why they are useful. The first are the uh, telemeter switches for the radar. By switching between these two key maps, you can change your radar from the standard mode, which is like a close combat mode. Basically anything in your HUD space will automatically get locked if it's within six or seven nautical miles. This is great because you can keep your eyes on target without, without having to fiddle with the radar TDC. 
like the MiG-21. Now, one thing in particular to the Mirage F1 is the HUD. An orange box appears on targets. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because sometimes you lock before you can see them visually, so this gives you a boost in situational awareness. The issue is when you get close, the box will obscure their target so much that you may not actually be sure what you're targeting. This may force you to unlock the target and reacquire him. I have noticed that this close combat mode can be a little finicky, so sometimes you have a perfect shooting opportunity and then you may fail to pick him up again. I have been noticing that it is sometimes easier to get GCI to clear targets so you can confirm your shot or to go into engagements unlocked and then you lock once you're ready and you have uh, an audible confirmation. I have been noticing that it's sometimes easier to get GCI to, to confirm your target or to confirm visually before actually locking with your radar. Now extending ourselves out to longer ranges and using the standard high altitude mode is fairly straightforward and Reichheit's video covers everything. One thing that I do want to say is that the R530 EM is no slouch and I have been genuinely surprised by the performance of it. I was really expecting a torpedo that would fail to keep up with its targets that were maneuvering and instead I have noticed that this thing is catching targets that are in turns. So it's been interesting. My recommendation with this is to wait as long as possible to shoot. If the motor is still burning on the missile, it has a good chance to hit. Time will tell if this still applies as they work on the module more. I would not be surprised if the radar becomes easier to notch in the future. Lastly, I have not been using the R530 IR version too much. Trying to hit cold targets with it, especially ones that are running away or maneuvering hard, does not work well, but if you do, you need to hold your fire as long as possible to make sure the missile motor has enough juice to reach target. In general, this plane isn't the world's best dogfighter, but it has a powerful radar, and with the Fox 1 missile, it has some reach, assuming you can IFF your targets because you don't have an IFF system internally. I try to generally skew toward hit and run tactics instead of committing to hard fights, and I typically only take one underbelly R530 EM. I hope these quick tips give you a good idea of how I am approaching this plane. Like I said earlier, the Cold War scene doesn't feel fundamentally different with the entry of this module, and I mean that as a compliment. It feels very Cold War. It is not dominant across the board. It's not completely multi-role. It has its pros and cons, and understanding them will yield good results. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button and consider subscribing as it is the best way to help a small channel like myself. Thank you and see you next week.